Asia Pacific and Japan's finance industry, the price of innovation has become dangerously high. The industry has become ground zero for web attacks in the region. How can financial institutions stay secure, yet also stay ahead? Let's unpack Akamai's State of the Internet report, The High Stakes of Innovation, and look at how financial institutions can wager on innovation without paying the price. Globally, we have witnessed a staggering 65% increase in web app and API attacks. In APJ, nearly half of all web app and API attacks were aimed at the financial sector. On top of that, Australia has the most heavily attacked financial industry in the world, receiving 37% of all attacks worldwide on the industry. We also see that malicious bots are spreading across cyberspace, and how some application attack types dominate the landscape over others. And through it all, the adoption of third-party scripts brings both progress and peril. So, what are the implications for the financial services industry? Many attacks on financial services in APJ fall under three categories. Web-based, bot-based, and script-based attacks. Web-based attacks include web app and API attacks and zero-day vulnerability exploitation. Bot-based attacks include DDoS attacks or simply attacks using malicious bots. And lastly, script-based attacks include the exploitation of third-party scripts. Let's take a closer look at web app and API attack vectors. Of the many attack vectors available to cybercriminals, LFI, or local file inclusion, stands out as the predominant attack vector in APJ, making up 63% of all financial web app and API attacks. This is followed by XSS, or cross-site scripting, in second place. Recent attacks also remind us that SQL injections continue to be persistent threats to the financial sector in APJ. The vulnerability of APIs deserves a special mention. Financial organizations are increasingly exposed to API vulnerabilities today, with the growth of API-dependent services such as open banking. APIs are such a grave cybersecurity concern that OWASP has created a list of top 10 API security risks devoted completely to API vulnerabilities. There are two main types of vulnerable APIs the financial services industry needs to address. One of them is shadow APIs. These are APIs that exist and operate outside the official monitored channels within a financial institution and lack proper documentation and security. These characteristics lead to three major consequences. First, the threat of potential data breaches. Second, regulatory risks of handling of sensitive data via unsecured APIs. And third, interoperability issues with applications leading to operational disruptions. The second category of vulnerable APIs comprises of APIs with inadequate security measures. They have weak or misconfigured authentication, which paves the way for unauthorized access and the risk of SQL injection. These vulnerable APIs put financial services at increased risk of attacks. For APIs, there are two main attack categories the financial services industry needs to be aware of. Access control bypass and broken object level authorization, or BOLA. Access control bypass is a tactic that exploits vulnerabilities like broken authentication, allowing attackers to sneak past access controls and gain permissions they shouldn't have. On the other hand, BOLA targets broken access controls in APIs, leading to unauthorized access, manipulation of resources, and even full account takeover. For a closer look at app and API attack vectors and BOLA, check out our other State of the Internet video. This year, the cyber threat landscape is marked by an active pursuit of zero-day vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities in software supply chains have become a preferred method of intrusion into FSIs, especially in the context of ransomware attacks. However, it is important to note that besides emerging vulnerabilities, many organizations continue to harbor older known vulnerabilities that have gone unpatched, sometimes for years. Attackers know this and continue to abuse both older vulnerabilities as an easy point of entry and newer vulnerabilities via novel tactics. It is hence critical to adopt a multi-layered defense strategy that protects against various attack vectors, buying time for your security teams to keep up with the latest threats and patch zero-day vulnerabilities as soon as possible. 
Attackers targeting APJ also use malicious bots to commit fraud and steal identities, either to sell them or weaponize them for other cyber attacks. Findings from Akamai's Client Reputation Intelligence reveal that over 50% of IPs targeting financial services this year are linked to web scrapers, followed by account takeovers. Specifically in APJ, 13% of all malicious bot requests targeted financial services. From January 2022 to June 2023, we witnessed a staggering 400 billion malicious bot requests. On top of that, malicious APJ bot traffic skyrocketed 128% year-on-year from 2022, with a notable spike from the fourth quarter of 2022 to the first quarter of 2023. Top malicious bot targets in APJ include the Philippines, which takes the lead at almost 41%, followed by China and Australia. Akamai's research has also discovered that there is a global surge in DDoS attacks targeting the financial sector. Specifically, we are seeing a surge in Layer 3, Layer 4, and Layer 7 attacks. DDoS attacks are also being leveraged as an extortion tactic in larger ransomware attacks. Such attacks put pressure on victims to pay the ransom and have gained popularity with cybercriminals recently. In APJ, 40% of scripts used in the financial industry are third-party scripts. While third-party scripts are not inherently malicious, the lack of visibility and control over them introduces new security risks, potentially creating blind spots and pathways for attackers. One such risk is form jacking, which involves the injection of malicious scripts into web forms while it's stealing sensitive data. Session hijacking, on the other hand, is about malicious scripts swiping session tokens impersonating users, and sneaking into their accounts. On the bright side, businesses are beginning to recognize the implications of not safeguarding against these malicious scripts. In fact, many industries in APJ are adopting the PCI DSS 4 standard and client script protection to fortify their defenses against malicious third-party scripts. It's inevitable. The financial sector will always be a target for attacks but here's what you can do to mitigate them. To enhance app and API security, financial institutions can adopt four layers of solutions and strategies. Visibility and response, incident response and readiness, script security, and DDoS security measures. The first layer is visibility and response. Financial institutions need to swiftly detect rogue APIs, monitor for attacks or abuse, investigate incidents, and automate mitigation policies. These safeguards are essential for routine attacks and specialized threats like account takeover, web scraping, phishing, and the challenges posed by financial aggregators. When working with financial aggregators, financial institutions should construct an edge-based governance model to provide clear visibility into bot and API traffic, unveiling sources, destinations, and the flow of requests. This visibility can then be used to determine the appropriate level of access for seamless user experiences while reducing risk. The second layer is incident response and readiness. Financial institutions should leverage frameworks such as the OWASP Top 10 for web apps and APIs and the MITRE ATT&CK framework. They should develop internal training programs, establish baseline measurements, and create test plans for red teaming and penetration testing to enhance their cybersecurity defenses. The next layer is script security. Financial institutions need to ensure compliance with PCI DSS 4 and work with legal departments to update policies, aligning with emerging regulations. The final layer is DDoS security measures. Financial institutions must continuously update plans for layer 3, 4, and 7 attacks. They must track attack trends evaluate risks based on current capabilities, set triggers for life exercises, and conduct one if they have not been attacked in the last nine months. Amid a period of unprecedented digital transformation, the financial industry navigates the intersection of innovation and risk. To combat the evolving landscape of cyber threats, it is crucial for your financial institution to remain vigilant. And to do that, you will need to stay well informed with the latest information about the evolving threat landscape. For the most recent security insights, 
check out the description below for a link to Akamai's security research blog. For more details on bolstering your security within the industry, read the full State of the Internet report linked in the description below.